So just one last question then. So when you did your, you know, you recently, what, two years ago, a year ago, I can't remember, you did an 8B plus in Spain, didn't you? Did that same approach just happen? You went through the same thing? Uh, the climb is called, called Inuit. It was, it's an 8B plus uh, 80 degree sort of steep slab on uh, on very rough granite in a place called La Pedrisa called the rockiness it was sown as a um a forest um for the resins and then uh, petrochemical industry came up with something which meant that they didn't harvest the trees so it's this you know, tree lined area with big vultures and praying mantis and stuff and this one route called Inuit has got this lovely lens block about a meter away from it and uh the start is for me when i was fat because i was 11 and a half stone when i first did the moves when i went there um and uh it starts off with a kind of probably uh a, a v7 move where you have to foot hit a foothold really accurately and another foothold and then hit, hit two slopers and then your foot on the last bit of the movement comes up into the scoop that's if you're heavy you know and you can't climb it with um with the skills of having strong fingers. So, um, so it was, why did that route come about? I mean, th that was in the main area where, where Tello Martin, who's, um, he's a local hotshot, uh, very interested in sort of the same sorts of things of me. Um, he um, suggested we go and try this after we'd been on an 8A, which was his, wife's project that i managed to do in in her boots so her boots got up the project before she did which uh was a you bastard she called me you doing the route like that it's quite funny but um you know and i did that route with no hands like and when i'd been on that did the moves on the 8a no hands which i want to go back and do because it's a it amuses me to do uh something rude like that um I ended up uh, trying Inuit and because I was excited at the beginning and it was too hard anyway, the pressure of, of doing the moves was off. I just ran at the holds as they were and, and, and I don't, I think I did the move first go and it's a move that some, uh, some very well-known climbers have not been able to do at all, you know, so I thought I can do this and I think um, rather than spend a lot of time chewing my fingers up, a lot of the holds were marked out by tallow. Um, I got some other sequences going as well, which I like. They were a bit less powerful, but a bit insecure. And then eventually I went for like a sport climbing approach where I could make sure I did the moves. That's something I don't like, that, that um, make sure you do it kind of get your tax return in kind of approach to modern climbing, that, that lawyer, accountants, sports science kind of white middle class fitness craze crap like I, I i can't i can't credit it with any respect. i mean it, it does it does really work for some people but what it doesn't always allow for is the mystical it doesn't allow for pure freedom and expression and feeling into what feels right at the moment it's it's quite regimented isn't it um but it does work it does and, work um, and but it, it works for getting your body up a climb. It doesn't work for getting your being um, up a climb. You know, you you you. It's almost like you're not there. I want to be there and find out where there is, and that's the climb. So it's a it's a it's an It's an inhalation rather than an ex. Sorry, an an implosion rather than an explosion because it's something coming in from the outside rather than me telling you the outside what, what I want. It's like Victor Schauberger's um, way of making water live, um, like with all the streams and things destroying riverbanks. Victor Schauberger had a way of making the, the river revolve in the middle. And uh, that meant that he didn't have to build um, resources to the side and because of different speeds of water you get salmon able, able to spawn um in colder and warmer water it's very interesting stuff but it's a different approach to control it's control by understanding the way things are rather than understanding how they how 
you know, not very well how they are and they're making it how you think they should be. You know, for instance, I've been re watching a lot of no dig gardening and uh, where you put compost down and, and um, mulch and then you, you go straight through that. And uh, by you doing that, you know, you don't get you don't get weeds. You don't have to plow and the mycelium, which make um, the actual minerals into available things for the plant, which then feeds us, which means then we're good looking, which means we manage to get the girl we want. Uh, you know, obviously should have started no dig earlier. Um, so it's like, um, you know, the the whole thing works really easily if we accept nature as it is. And my scene yes. is weird. Yeah. We don't like mushrooms because they look a bit weird. They don't look like us. But mycelium are really, really important because they. Yeah, I'm reading a book at the moment by Dan Millman called Body, Mind, Mastery. And he talks a lot about the natural order, about we can't rush the natural order. So there is the natural order of the world and how water can cut, th running water cuts through rock. And the human mind is always in such a rush and that is going past the natural order of things. And if we can work with the natural order, then we can work with our bodies and our minds at the right pace. And at the right pace, things change. Um, and I really like that kind of thinking. And I think it helps for people right now at home where they're sat there thinking, should I be training? Should I be doing this? What should I be doing? And you're rushing ahead with your mind. And to some extent, we're being told at the moment, aren't we, to go with the natural order of whatever it is however uncomfortable it is yeah i mean one idea comes to mind which is a bit esoteric but it's, it's a beautiful thing that i i love to do i like to do it when oh do i share this now well i've already thought about doing it so it, <laughs> when you're trying to do a really hard movement so so try and um, have a look on the internet and find a, a position called uh, the horse stance uh, and you need your knees further open like 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 Catherine my, my Tai Chi teacher would tell me you need to open your quay I think it's called and then you you have your hands up level with your shoulders you have a string of pearls from your head and then you settle in, into your feet and you hold your arms out and if you wait till you're getting relaxed and then I use a phrase for myself I go imagine where you are and it's a very very weird instruction and that just makes me just cream out and where i am comes in and then my definition is as as me just disappears you know i'm where sterling moss is well i think that we can learn so much from the East and from things like Tai Chi, absolutely, and that firmness and standing in ourselves and in the ground. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs>